again, interestingly, the Arches wasn't, it, it kind of got going when the church was a few years old. And I remember Tom, my husband at the time, was overseeing the ministries to the poor and looking for somewhere, just a small size of a garage he was looking for to um, um, store a few clothes. And uh, anyway, he, he found this place and obviously it was a huge, about 3,000 square feet, which was massive, a number of arches under an old bridge, completely derelict, um, a disgusting place in many ways. And interestingly, I'd three months before had felt God speak to me very clearly about giving up my career as a nurse, which was a huge struggle for me because I'd trained and worked and all of that. But I knew I had to let it go and, I, and I'm out of obedience I said, God, I'll, I'll lay everything down and just whatever you want. So interestingly, when I remember Tom coming home, of course I'd got a bit of time on my hands and um, he said, I found this, this place, I would love you to come and have a look. And initially I just thought, oh Tom, not another of your crazy ideas. But anyway, I went into this place that, that uh, sort of became the Arches and it was completely disgusting. Um, derelict, run down, dark, cold, smelly. But I remember going in and just having this incredible vision of what it could be. And uh, it was, you know, I just imagined it being a warm, welcoming place and to provide practical provision. And I just saw people and it was just incredibly exciting. Anyway, I was given the go ahead, like, absolutely, you know, because we'd waited so many years of, of not doing anything of our own, it felt, you know, totally the right time and appropriate to do something. So um, I was given the go-ahead to, to start something off and interestingly I got the keys and uh, a couple of months later and walked in and then felt completely overwhelmed, this disgusting, dark, horrible place, what on earth could come out of it kind of thing. But I remember thinking, I really want the church to own this. This isn't about something separate to the church. So I remember contacting all the small group leaders and saying, do you want to get involved painting, decorating? And um, they all got involved. So all the small groups started coming in. And so while they're cleaning and painting, I'm going around going, oh, this is so exciting. We could do this and we could do that. And so there was like this buzz created of what could be achieved. And for me, the vision was very simple. We wanted to be extravagantly generous, create a wonderful atmosphere, like an extension of our home to welcome people in. So it was very simple. I also did the big ask of a number of, of key people who I, I just kind of got a feel, I thought they're really up for this. And I said, you know, would you give me a year just to kind of help me get, get going here, get something off the ground? To which they did. And I've got a couple of volunteers who've been with me for 12 years, so they've completely stuck it out. So slowly but surely, we kind of just began to, you know, collect stuff and people got involved in the excitement and it did start very slowly. And then I remember the first family coming in, you know, and a social worker with um, a family from uh, Romania and they got absolutely nothing. And we kind of dived on this, uh, this family and started to give stuff away. And that was the beginning. And we've just seen, well, now we see thousands of people come through the door. So that, yeah, that was the very beginning.